All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Photosynthesis Modeling Screencast. Yay! All right, so the first thing you're going to need to make sure that you are prepared is the Photosynthesis Modeling Worksheet. Make sure that you have that out in front of you and that you've filled in all of the blanks at the top. You'll also notice at the top there is a list of helpful vocabulary. I'm going to suggest that you read that over so that you are familiar with these words because it'll help you as you go through this activity. Now keep in mind, this is a screencast. The beautiful thing about a screencast is that you can pause, rewind, or restart the video at any time. This really helps you achieve our school goal, which is to own your own success. The objective for this screencast, you will be able to model how a plant uses different resources to create food. You'll know you've got it when you can use the information given to determine the full formula for photosynthesis. So, all this talk about photosynthesis, well, what is it? Well, photosynthesis is the process by which a green plant makes food. In this screencast, you're going to be watching as we model how a plant uses different resources to create food. We will be using the following supplies. A leaf, the sun, six green chips, 24 blue chips, 24 orange chips. The green chips will represent carbon atoms, and that's represented by a capital letter C. The orange chips will represent oxygen atoms, and that's represented by a capital letter O. And the blue chips will represent hydrogen atoms, which, and that is a capital letter H. Atoms and molecules. An atom is the smallest particle of a molecule. Each chip in this, in this modeling activity is going to represent one atom. A molecule is several atoms grouped together. So anytime you see the word molecule, you should have more than one chip. So if we take a look that, uh, at the chips that we have, what can we make with them? The chips at your desk represent individual atoms. Using these chips, you can, you can combine atoms, or the chips, to make two different substances needed in photosynthesis. Move the chips to make as many of these molecules as possible. All right, that looks amazing. So what we have created here, we have two hydrogen atoms combined with one oxygen atom, and that gives us water, yay. And then over here, we've taken the remaining um, sets of two oxygen and combined them with the carbon, and that gives us carbon dioxide. So the water molecule is made of H2O. That subscript two tells us that we need two hydrogen and one oxygen, while carbon dioxide is CO2. So that subscript two tells us that we need two oxygen, but just one carbon. Now, CO2, this carbon dioxide, 
enters the leaf through the stomata. How many molecules of CO2, carbon dioxide, did you make? So count them. This is the first part of the formula, which is represented by an A. Next, H2O, which is water, enters the leaf through the stomata and the roots. How many molecules of H2O, or water, did you make? Count them up. This is the second part of the formula, which is represented by B. These reactions occur in the presence of sunlight. This is the third part of the formula and represented by the letter C. Now that we have these values for all the variables, let's put them in the formula together. So on that first line, you're gonna look for the variable A, put the number and name of the molecule. For the second part, you're gonna look for the variable B, put the number and name of the molecule. And then that last part right now, you're gonna tell us what we just added, what, what, what was C. So you have all of your molecules inside the leaf. Keep them paired as H2O water and CO2. Draw a model of what you see on the screen in the space provided in your packet. Make sure to have an accurate model that it is labeled. So make sure each atom is labeled with an O, a C, or an H. As sunlight is absorbed, the light breaks apart the H2O or the water molecules in the leaf. Be sure to add the sun to the model that you created above. Now separate your H2O or water molecules back into individual atoms as we just did. How many molecules of oxygen gas did you make or how many O's do you have? This is the sixth part of the formula re represented by the letter Z. These O molecules leave the leaf through the stomata. Goodbye little oxygen. So what we're going to do now is draw a model, a labeled model, of what we have left. And then we're going to look at the part of photosynthesis that actually creates the simple sugar. Okay, we're going to pair the remaining H or hydrogen atoms into H2, which is going to give us hydrogen gas. How many molecules of H2, hydrogen gas, did you make? These hydrogen molecules power the rest of the food making process. Okay, so in order for the chloroplast to function, the CO2 or carbon dioxide molecules must be separated into groups of three. We're now going to arrange the molecules in this way. The carbon dioxide molecules each attract an H2 hydrogen gas molecule to create a chain. We're going to place one H2 hydrogen gas molecule at the end of each CO2 carbon dioxide molecule. This pairing that we just did, it will then force one oxygen atom to be removed from the molecule. You now have pairs of H2, which is our hydrogen gas molecules, and O, which, is, which are oxygen atoms, which are not part of the chain. 
The structure and chemical components of a chloroplast allows H2, the hydrogen gas molecules, to pair up and join with one oxygen. When this pairing happens, what molecule has been created? This is the fifth part of the formula, Y. These molecules leave the leaf through the stomata. This process is called In the space in your packet, draw a model of what is remaining in the leaf. Please make sure that your model is labeled. Look at the atoms that remain on the leaf. How many carbon atoms are left? How many hydrogen atoms? How many oxygen atoms? What chemical can you make with these atoms? Which component of the formula does this represent? Now write the full formula for photosynthesis. Remember, if you're having a hard time figuring out what A, B, C, X, Y, and Z are, you should refer back to the other pages in the packet as we have worked through this during this modeling activity. The last page, these are your conclusions. You will use the information that you learned during this modeling activity to answer the questions on the following page. All right, guys, remember, if you're stuck, if you're confused, if you don't know what to do next, nothing is never the answer. Go back, rewatch, rewind. All right, and I can't wait to discuss this with you in class.